Hi everybody, this is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Today I'm going to start some hydroponic cilantro and I'm going to take you along with me on the process of growing this from start to harvest. Now you need a little bit of equipment to begin with. First of all, I like to use rock wool cubes. This is a uh, two inch rock wool cube and I'm going to just get them wet in some filtered water and you see for these cubes it doesn't take any amount of time at all. <clears throat> I'm just going to use three of them and I have three cilantro seeds here. Now these are intended for growing. They have not been treated. They're organic and so forth. So uh, these are intended for this purpose. Usual rule of thumb is to put two seeds in each uh, rock roll cube or growing medium that you're going to have just to be sure that they germinate. However, I know that there is a high germination rate on these particular seeds. So I'm going to take my chance and just put one seed in each. Now I want you to see what I'm doing here. I took a toothpick and just kind of made this hole more accessible. This is plenty wet and normally I would take a toothpick and just wet it and touch the seed but those seeds are so large I don't think they're gonna pick up that way so I've got a pair of tweezers dropped it in the hole there and now I'm going to take that toothpick and just push it down some into the hole and kind of secure it against the side of that rock wool and then I have a little container here that has some filtered water in it. Now I'll explain that a little bit better after we do all three of these. Oops, I picked that up with my finger, didn't I? That's okay. Now we just want to secure that in there. And whoop, the third one got picked up along the way too. So we're going to just go ahead and drop that in this hole. And that's how easy it is to get them planted no issue whatsoever. Now there's a couple different ways you can handle this. You want to make sure that the rock wool cubes stay moist and you could just initially soak them and then have a spray bottle with some filtered water in it and then spray them once or twice a day just to make sure that they keep moist and you can also put a lid on there. I do not close it tight. I just uh, allow a little bit of airflow in there and have it like that. Or I like to put a little bit of my filtered water in here. That way I don't have to worry about spraying them with water. And I know that these cubes are going to be definitely moist that way. Now, this is a little bit of water. They're not being buried in water. I'm not drowning these seeds. I'm just keeping the rock wool cubes wet until these things germinate. And so what I'm going to do is just partially cover it like this. Does not need to go under lights at this point. I don't worry about putting it in a really dark place. I'm just going to put it on my growing shelf away from the lights. My growing shelf, I'm talking about my hydroponic setup and uh, just away from the lights it's no big deal and I'm just going to wash them and make sure that this water doesn't dry up and when they start to emerge then we'll continue from there. Germination for cilantro takes seven to ten days. These plants emerged in eight days. We are at day 13 so you see they grew quite a bit now this is really fascinating to me. I put one seed in each of these rock wool cubes and you see we have twins here and in this one we have twins. Now how that happened I don't know maybe some seeds do have more than one potential. This one did not germinate so I'm going to go ahead and put another seed in there and because these are all going to go in separate um, containers so it won't matter. So you can separate the twins uh, and I've got another video that shows how to do that. I'm not going to do it this time since they came up from one seed. 
These roots are likely to be very intertwined and if I try to split them apart I may damage both of them so I'm not going to do it. So when you have more than one plant in a rock wool cube you have to get rid of one. You either have to separate them out or you have to destroy one. Move this so that you can hopefully see. So I'm going to cut one off and I can't tell you which one is the best one to do. This one's got a green uh, stem and this one's got a brown and I don't know why. I'm going to cut the one with the brown stem. There it goes. You cannot have two plants in there. You only can have one. We've got roots coming out. There's no way of knowing which plant that root belonged to. I'm going to put it in a rock wool cube. You do not want to shove this all the way down because you don't want to cramp up that root. You want to give it the opportunity to come through the holes in here. So I have a toothpick here. I might try to be able to feed the root through there. I just did manage to get the root out a little bit. So these are ready to be planted now and I'm going to do the same thing with this one. This also has roots on the bottom there. They're kind of stuck to the rock wheel cube. I'm going to go ahead and just put it down not entirely all the way. I want to leave a little space so that root can make its way down and one of these spindly kind of plants it's going to go. I'm just going to pick one and cut it. They will not grow if you leave both in there. It will create problems. Neither one will do very very well. So alright we're going to get things together and I'm going to go ahead and plant them and show you the process on that. Now the simplest way to plant these things hydroponically is just to take a gallon jug that you have on hand and cut the top off of it and you want to cut a hole large enough so a two inch net pot will fit within there. So an easy way to do it is to place it upside down, draw a line around it and then cut on the inside around that line and as you can see it's not going to be absolutely perfect. It doesn't matter as long as that net pot will fit on there and then you do need to protect the water inside from the light. You can wrap this thing up with layers of newspaper if you want. You can spray paint it if you want or you can take a strip of aluminum foil and wrap it around that jug and I'll show you what I do here. I just kind of fold it up and you could take some duct tape, painters tape, masking tape, any kind of tape that you want and fold in the edges so that you cover it up completely so that light is not going to enter that jug. Take that shut and as long as you've got the top of it where that foil edge is going to come right around where the net pot is, you are good. Then you want to fill that jug with a nutrient solution to the point where it comes to about here. There's a line that, of plastic that runs across the net pot. You don't want to go beyond that line. Just going a little below that line is good. So if you take an empty net pot and you put it in there when you're filling it with your nutrient solution then you can tell exactly where that water line is going to be. Now, regarding nutrient solutions, cilantro prefers something that's on the mild side with a pH of around 6. This is the nutrient solution that I'm using and I use about three-fourths of a teaspoon which is less than what they recommend but that's going to be more appropriate for leafy greens like lettuce and herbs. I'm not advocating any particular nutrient solution. There's a lot out there so you can use whichever one you want. This one does mix up very acidic and so I wind up using a pH up in there to bring it to a pH of around 6. 
I wanted to make mention too that when you're mixing up your nutrient solution you definitely want to make sure you test the pH. The pH needs to be around 6 or so with cilantro. Different ways that you can test the pH. One, you can use a meter. I don't recommend any particular brand but there are a lot of these available online. Or you could use some pH test strips and all you do is you simply tear off one of the strips and then you dip it in the water, this is a nutrient solution, and then just right away compare it with the chart that comes with the test strips and you can tell six would be about the same color as the strips themselves so if they don't change color then you know that it's about six so in the, with this packet that makes it about right for cilantro but the pH is really important when you're dealing with hydroponics so you want to make sure that that is right and then I fill my jug that I have covered with the aluminum foil and I've tested it to make sure that the water level is right and then I am placing my cilantro in there and it's going to go under grow light and so I'll keep you posted on how it goes with that and I'm going to get this other jug ready to go for this other plant and I'm also going to put a new seed in this one and start that one all over again and hopefully we'll get germination this time around. We're 22 days into this process and you can see that we do have some true leaves on our cilantro plants. So they are coming along and yes, growing herbs at home can be a very slow process. We're at day 55 on the cilantro and I'd say you could go ahead and start harvesting it. And to harvest it all you need to do is take a pair of scissors and just snip off whatever uh, branches, whatever stems you want. I would not cut the whole plant down because it's still growing from within as you can see. And so as you cut the outer stems off, the inner stems are going to come up and continue to grow. The only thing you need to do at this point is monitor the liquid content, the solution content in the jugs, and you can just kind of shake it a little bit. And all you need to do is just put a funnel in here and add some fluid. And you do not want to bring your uh, additional solution up to the point of the net pot. You want to keep it no higher than down some on the roots because it does need some air in there. Now if you plan on using a lot of cilantro, I'm sure you're going to want more than just the two plants, but I did this just for demonstration purposes. I do hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below. This is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Bye for now.